Um, uh, I just uh, returned from DC, uh, myself and the rest of the council, all except for one of our members, uh, spent the last few days uh, in our nation's capital. Uh, among other things, we attended the National League of Cities, uh, which is a, um, uh, one of the, the bigger organizations uh, that helps us uh, share policy ideas, uh, learn best practices, and come back and apply that to Wichita so that we can do a better job in making sure that we get the most out of our tax dollars. Also, we met with department heads, um, particularly uh, people uh, in which we are applying for grant money, um, people who we put applications in with, different departments. Uh, and our goal is to build relationships and ask uh, questions uh, directly about how we could be more effective in the future of bringing more federal money in for our local projects. And I would say that was uh, quite successful, and I hope to have, be able to release uh, more public details later as some of those conversations become finalized. And in D.C., we also met with our congressional delegation. Uh, we were able to meet with uh, Ron Estes, um, with uh, Senator Roberts, uh, and Senator Moran, uh, and discuss with them some of the uh, issues we have going on in Wichita and how they could help us at the federal level, uh, particularly with support, uh, with funding. And, you know, as we talk about uh, our efforts with the department heads uh, to uh, get more uh, out of our applications. Uh, they are sending letters and support and really trying to help us out uh, at the DC level uh, as we fight for those at the local level. So the trip was a, a, a success. Uh, I think that uh, we had a bit of a divide and conquer strategy where our members uh, who specialize in certain policy were able, particularly in the NLC convention, to go and learn about how that policy is being applied in other areas. Uh, and then I went and um, you know, did my, uh, the courses that I thought would be most prevalent uh, for helping me as a new incoming mayor uh, be successful in this role. So uh, it was very positive, uh, but I just uh, wanted everyone to know that uh, we're back, we're safe, uh, and I think everyone's probably pretty tired because we got in pretty late last night. So that's going to lead me into talking about the census. Uh, we are starting uh, the invitations to participate in a 2020 census, uh, which will be mailed out. So I want to be clear about uh, what you're looking for in your mailbox. The uh, front of the envelope will look just like the slide here. And the, uh, and the content will, will look like this. Um, the reason why I tell you that is there are some groups out there who are interested in gathering public information or information for their own reasons, and uh, sometimes they will use the word census, and it's confusing. Uh, but it's very important that, you, that we all fill out um, the official census uh, and know what it actually will look like. So I can't stress enough how important this is because this census, it only happens every 10 years and it has a effect on how much uh, money uh, or resources we can get from the federal government uh, based on our population. Uh, so for example, the money that is used to fund infrastructure and programs uh, that, that our families, our neighbors' families use every day, such as school lunch programs, uh, road and highway programs, Pell Grants for college, the state children's health programs, the city neighborhood resource centers, parks and libraries, Head Start, crime victim assistance, unemployment insurance, and the list goes on and on. Uh, so it's very important that we spend uh, not really, really a short amount of time uh, and get get our census information in. We really only get one shot every 10 years to do this right. So I'm encouraging everyone uh, to please look into this. And just to take that a step further and, and put this into content, uh, every family that isn't counted in the census, we lose approximately $53,000. So think about that. Think about your neighborhood. Think about um, you know the, the people uh, at, at the grocery store. Every time one of them, or even yourself, uh, you know, skip this, um, we lose approximately $53,000 coming into our community. Uh, that's the uh, equivalent of uh, a lot of people's full-time salary. So it, it really does have a ripple effect. Uh, also filling out the census is required by law. Um, it is confidential, it is 100% confidential. Uh, and it benefits us in, you know, as I listed off in many ways. Uh, so please take the time, uh, fill out the census. It will be mailed to you, but also um, uh, online. I'm trying to see if I have the website. Uh, there will be. Is it in a letter? Okay. Um, didn't know if Megan was grabbing it. So uh, we want to make sure that um, 
you know, and if you're someone who's interested, we had a, one of my town halls had a, a um, person who was working or representing the census who said they are hiring people uh, to go out and actually knock doors and talk to folks to gather, gather that information. I believe the number, if you text jobs to 313131, uh, you will get um, information back on how to be one of these people who, uh, who go and collect census information. It, I don't want to quote uh, the amount of money because I, I could be wrong. This isn't a, a city program. It's a federal program. Uh, but my understanding, I, I remember the, the pay was pretty significant. It was, it was a, a good uh, job to have on the side, definitely. And you can work up to 40 hours a week or as low as 20, I think, is what the person who uh, was pitching this uh, what, what was discussing. So if you have filled out the census and you're looking for some side work, particularly when the weather is getting uh, better, uh, please um, you know, make sure to check out some of the opportunities uh, that might be available uh, because not only will that help you as far as getting some uh, side money, but also every time you sign someone up who otherwise wouldn't be signing up, uh, you are helping our community. Uh, so it's a big deal. We wanna make sure everyone um, knows that uh, it's, it's a big deal and that it's easy to uh, just go knock this off your to-do list. All right, so I'm supposed to uh, introduce Pete Meissner to tell us how important the census is, which I think I just did. <laughs> so uh, well, Pete, why don't you come up here and give us a uh, rundown. This is Pete Meissner. We're also gonna talk about the 150th anniversary uh, and celebration and what's great about having Pete here is he was my age. Uh, uh, during the, the first, um, the first uh, uh, birthday of Wichita, so he could give us a more of a historical perspective. Everyone, Pete Meister. Those are always hit of jokes, too. Yeah. Thanks for Thanks. laughing. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Thank you. I'm glad I could be here for that, for that part. Hey, the, uh, the, uh, the census, I was a part of the uh, original meeting, the kickoff meeting. I see a couple of our census people back there. And, uh, and when I was elected in 11... Of course, the 2010 census had just happened. I didn't realize that uh, then we got into, it's important related to governing boundaries, uh, our federal delegation, you know, the, as well as our, our city and county uh, uh, boundaries for the seven or the six council members, as well as the, uh, the five uh, commissioners. So it, it has that kind of effect, uh, and that's divided by population. Um, the mayor mentioned the the money is I, I was exposed to uh, how much if we just miss a few people you just heard what, what that was about in the state you know Kansas especially when we're growing a little bit it's really important that Kansas gets all the money that they can get um, other states may not care as much but it is it is important and uh, when you miss just a few you know, I'm, I've got a number that says like two thousand, over two thousand dollars per person per year. That's you know, that's twenty thousand dollars over the ten years. So, and I, I'm reminded that not ten years ago, but before that, uh, you know, we all is all door to door and paper stuff, kind of intrusive. But now it's so good, you can go to the library, you can go online. As a matter of fact, it's KansasCounts.org. So kansascounts.org. Anyway, you can go to our library. You can do it a, a number of ways. I, we do know that we all experience that there's some people that, that don't like government, and they might have an opinion, I'm not going to do it. Others may have their own reasons why they don't want to do it. Uh, but these, uh, these records are required to be sealed for 75 years, correct? 72 years. So it's 72 years before anything's released and, and none of that personal information is ever released. So, and in the court, and they don't, uh, the Census Bureau does not communicate any information other than numbers to the uh, various federal agencies that dispatch uh, various grant programs. So um, we appreciate we could use all the help in, in assuring the public that this really matters to our city and our, and our county and our state to, to do that. Um, other than that, that's about all I could add to what you've already said. Um, so make sure you open the right envelope when you get it. So, and you can, yeah, you can be proactive and go to the library or get online and do it. And uh, 
and have that chore out of your way. Okay, thanks. Yes, Stick around, yeah. we might have some more questions. Okay. The, uh, uh, so also, um, we are celebrating Wichita and the county's uh, 150th year uh, this summer, and we're looking forward to spending uh, really the entire spring and summer celebrating that. Uh, our partners visit Wichita and the Wichita Regional Chamber of Commerce the wind surge and together Wichita are helping us plan the events where we can celebrate all over town. Um, so go to uh, 150ict.com to see all the great events that will be planned. Uh, these will include uh, free movies uh, opportunities over at, uh, um, at, at Napster Park. Uh, those will run from in June and July. Uh, and also keep an eye out for Together Wichita's uh, keeper unveilings. Uh, they'll be installing 13 new keeper statues all across the city uh, to beautify our shared spaces. There will also be a celebration of the new Riverfront Stadium on July 18th. That will be uh, on our, our birthday, uh, excuse me, on our uh, uh, right around our birthday celebrations uh, to celebrate our community as well. So check out uh, 150ict.com to see a full listing of events and details. Uh, and Commissioner, I'm looking forward to celebrating with you and our other partners. So, so also for tonight, uh, just so everyone knows, we are having the grand opening of the redesign of uh, uh, Nabster Park. The, festivi the festivities will kick off at 9 p I mean, excuse me, at 5 p.m. Uh, we'll have food trucks, activities provided by Park and Rec, music from a local band uh, called Annie Up, and we'll end with a big bang involving fireworks. Uh, so you can also bid on silent auction items, uh, such as a ride in a fire truck, uh, or lighting the keeper of the planes, and more. So the proceeds will go to the Wichita Parks uh, Foundation. Uh, so we are hoping that all of you will join us again. Uh, that is at 5 p.m. tonight. Uh, library spring break. For those with kids, uh, you are quite aware that the spring break is almost here. Um, the Wichita Public Library has a great lineup of fun, creative, and educational opportunities and programs to keep uh, children and teens busy during spring break. Uh, so please make sure to check that out at our local library or on our website. Uh, we also have the parade uh, to kick off the spring break, uh, bring the kids and join us on Saturday in the Delano St. Patrick's Day Parade. The City Council and County Commission will be walking together in the parade and you will see several of our new law enforcement and safety vehicles. It's always a great time to come uh, out, uh, enjoy our community, uh, make sure you come early so you get a great seat. And last but not least, I am holding two town hall meetings uh, this weekend. Um, Saturday, we'll be at the Westlink Library from 3 to 5 p.m., uh, and that is uh, at 8518 uh, Bay Mayor, Baker May. Did I say that right? I got P here to help me out. Bake Meyer uh, Street. And Sunday, we'll be at the fire station uh, 20 from 2 to 4 at 2255 South Greenwich Street. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll be happy to take questions. I got Pete here too, so feel free to pepper him with the tough questions. I'll do the easy ones. Greenwich or Greenwich, depending on where. <laughs> I probably got myself in trouble with some, with some voters, I'm sure. Uh, questions? Well, since you're both up there from the city and the county responses at this point, um, closings for activities are coming in by the minute. Um, from tournaments to a meeting that's happening right now among educators also. When it comes to public gatherings right now, I mean, what, are, what what's the advice for folks who are watching the coronavirus approach closer? States of emergency are in effect in Kansas City. Um, what's the local plan here? How's it being adapted? Um, and, and, and what's your advice to folks about these public gatherings with the CDC warning that's also come out? So the uh, the county is actually the, the lead on this and we're more of a supportive role, uh, more of a partnership role, so I'm gonna hand it over to Pete. Yeah, thank you, that's a good question. Uh, we have been, uh, I wasn't expecting this, none of us were expecting this to happen and as elected official, I didn't think I'd be getting briefed and debriefed uh, really by the hour. Uh, last night we were on a, another call at 9.30 on an update and, uh, and I called the mayor to share with him the update. And so uh, there's clearly an awareness. Uh, it, it, it appears to me that agencies, uh, NBA, NCA, agencies are taking the lead uh, through their coordination on, on what events to cancel or gatherings to not have. Uh, there's a lot of evaluation going on. Adrian Byrne is our, is our director of uh, 
of the health here in, in Cedric County, and she's in really constant communication. Uh, Dr. Menz is also our medical, what's the title that is represented? The, the mental, or not, not the mental. Local health officer. He's at the KU Med Center. He's in total communication with CDC and Topeka and KDHD, KDHD, and uh, so. Um, and then you see, you know, we had a presentation from from uh, yesterday at the county commission meeting at 10 o'clock in the morning, and by 8 o'clock, you know, 12, 10 hours later, the, the president's making a new ban on travel and other things. So it, it really is. Uh, flowing fast if we felt like we needed to uh, we needed to postpone or recommend not not attending then then we'll make that announcement kind of based on on the experts that, that we're taking the information from I mean, the American Athletic Conference has now canceled its conference which Tuss State's part of that um, so this is becoming local very quickly right um, are these updates enough are they going to be coming more often when can we expect them well, if I can remind, there's, there's not been one case confirmed yet in Sedgwick County, which is encouraging. Um, the, the, the American Athletic Conference, the basketball tournament, they're still having the tournament, right? The, no, they just canceled it. Oh, they canceled the tournament. Okay, well, see, breaking did I say? News. Breaking news. Yeah. Breaking news. Wow. So, so I wonder if, uh, so I go ahead and say something. If you and it's a... Uh, and that's a really good example of uh, we we don't know fully what what the extent of uh, uh, the coronavirus is having on our state, and we are ready to respond as more information comes forward. Uh, we want to rely on experts. We want to rely on um, best practices. Uh, and you know, the the city. I think it was the last meeting uh, we had a presentation on the coronavirus uh, from um, the county and and how we. Are handling it versus handling other uh, like uh, pandemics from the past. Um, so moving forward, we are, and we put out a release yesterday, um, where our own practices of ensuring uh, cleanliness throughout our public buildings that the city owns, we've really stepped that up, including uh, not just um, increasing the amount of uh, the, the rounds of cleaning for, for the buildings, but also uh, everything from wiping down pens that people use, uh, making sure that we have, uh, we have a misting system uh, in you know, our airport uh, that uh, sterilizes the airport or, or comes close to it uh, at night. Uh, so it just runs consistently and it's just a, um, uh, it's, it's a sterilizing product. Uh, so the best way that, that we understand right now is, is to wash your hands, stay clean, Obviously, if you feel uh, any symptoms, uh, stay out of public places, uh, take care of yourself. If you are sick, don't go to work. If you have a fever, um, you know, if your kid has a fever, keep them home. Uh, the best way uh, to prevent this really is uh, both having, um, you know, this, the, the personal responsibility and awareness of, of yourself, washing your hands uh, and listening to your own body. And also on our side is to do what we can uh, for prevention. And then once, uh, and we are preparing for if there are cases, you know, right now, uh, as, as the commissioner said, we might not have a confirmed case, but, but when, when we do, we, we know that the commission is having those conversations as well. So is it a, just based off of what we know right now, and I know this could very well be up, this could be outdated in another 30 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. But based off of what we know right now, are public gatherings like this still appropriate to be held in the city? Because well, people are seeing we, these headlines everywhere else and they're wondering right. what about here? Well, um, Dr. Mims would say if he, if he said if, if you have a, a real concern, he would discourage you from attending. But he's not said, I think you need to ban all things. There's, a, there's another uh, issue about inside gatherings versus outside gatherings. And uh, so we, wanna, we do want to err on the side of caution for sure. But... Uh, uh, public gatherings. I think there was just a concert last night at Interest Arena. So you're right. Things change hourly, and uh, maybe by the time noon hits today, uh, I'll have to. I guess the, as a board of county health, uh, myself and the and the county commission, the ones that would issue a a statement, uh, either in discouraging or banning, if if it comes to that. But right now, we're not we're not there yet.
So. And we, just real quick, we understand our role at, at the city level. Uh, the county is the Board of County Health. Um, so those decisions come from the county, and we're lucky to have someone who has the experience a, as uh, Chair Meissner does. Um, our role is to help uh, be supportive, uh, but also to get that information out. So as information comes to us, uh, we will be utilizing our resources uh, to get that information out to the public. And I do want to thank um, the media outlets who have a paywall uh, usually when you click on a uh, article where you have to be a member or pay for it, uh, who have dropped those paywalls uh, and allowed uh, our members in our community, and, and the Eagle has done this, uh, to get access to this information. Uh, it's going to be very important because geographically we're seeing uh, trends with this virus geographically. Uh, so, you know, if you're watching what's happening in Washington State, let's say, or California, uh, then that's not necessarily what's happening in the Midwest. We were, we'll take lessons from that, but also we have to respond uh, to the variables that we're presented with. Uh, and part of that is to get the information out to you guys as fast as possible. Other questions? Yeah, uh, this is for both state, city or county. Um, we're talking about precautions going into what we can do uh, to kind of keep Kansas sort of clear. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of mentioned municipal buildings. Uh, is there any chance that, um, you might be hiring more in this period of time to kind of upkeep with that work. Um, is there any plans of that at all or talks of that? So that's a, that's a question really for the city manager. Uh, he, uh, as you guys know, our system is the administrative side is, is under the city manager. The policy side is under the electeds. I will tell you my conversations with the city manager is they have been able to increase, uh, um, all, and we got, Oh good, we got someone who actually is from the administration side who can help us with this. Uh, but we have been able to increase cleanliness and because we've got Ben here, I'm gonna actually hand it over. And Bob just walked in, who is the city manager, so he could actually answer that question too. I'm gonna step back, good timing on the question. Give it over to Ben. And I, I would say that there's, a, the, on the county side, the manager is already uh, doing plans for you know remote working or what departments are necessary, the, the roads departments, uh, physical, uh, work, evaluating their uh, leave, sick leave, things like that. There's a lot of evaluation going on right now in, in preparation if that has to happen. So, Ben. Good to see you. Likewise. <laughs> Wish it was on better circumstances. Uh, to your question of whether we'd be hiring any additional staff over and above our normal levels, right now we don't think that's uh, necessary. We've authorized overtime for our custodial staff who are at this point, I believe, all but one position is fully filled. So we've authorized overtime. A lot of the, some of the extra work is ongoing overnight. For example, the security screening area here in City Hall gets a thorough overnight cleaning. So that's more of shift uh, differential uh, and overtime. But in addition to that, we think we can also augment our existing city staff with contract services. Uh, so we've been reaching out uh, to a number of different uh, custodial providers uh, to augment our staff with uh, contract services. So for now, uh, we don't feel like we need to add any additional staff just to maintain our existing full staff levels, augment that with overtime and contract services where appropriate. Other questions? Okay. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate everyone thank being you. here. And thank you for of course. allowing us to be here. Thank you, sir.